Hello students, looking at current affairs for 3rd April, the news items picked up from the Hindi newspaper are these 10, we we'll look at them in detail. The first one, Congress promises to create wealth, ensure welfare for all. So Congress has released its 54 page manifesto titled, We Will Deliver for the 2019 Lok Sabha elections and it has promised to create wealth and guarantee welfare to every Indian citizen by focusing on 5 aspects, jobs, agriculture, health, education and welfare of women. So already we had seen the Congress had announced that it would provide uh, you know, 72,000 annually to 5 poor, poorest families under the Nutium I Yojana, NYAI. So this was the minimum income guarantee scheme which it announced. The party promised that this would be undertaken once it comes to power. Apart from that, now it has promised jobs that it has said that it will fill 22 lakh vacancies in union and state governments and create additional 10 lakh jobs in Gram Sabhastra. It has guaranteed 150 days instead of 100 days, 150 days of rural employment under the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Then apart from this, it has also for farmers, agriculture it has announced that a separate budget for farmers would be provided and also it said that non-repayment or default on a farm loan will now be a civil liability instead of a criminal offense. Also it promised that GST, goods and services tax would be revamped and startups would be given more liberty to operate first three years without any permissions. Then also on women, it has promised a women's reservation bill would be passed which is providing one third reservation to women in Lok Sabha and State Assembly seats. So it says we would pass this in the first session of the new Lok Sabha once we come to power. So this has been a long pending bill too. Apart from all these, it has also said that it would not show muscular militarism in Jammu Kashmir and start the process of dialogue to win the hearts and minds of the people of Jammu Kashmir. It also said that uh, it will work with the international community and take steps to isolate Pakistan and force it to end its terror infrastructure. Also, it said that on hate crimes like mob lynching, etc., it would uh, it would formulate a new law to deal with these. Also, it would uh, said it said that it would have a legislation to automatically disqualify lawmakers, that is, you know, members of parliament or legislative assemblies, who switch parties. And they will be barred from elections for two years. So here uh, a reference has been made to British sociologist Anthony Giddens. So Anthony Giddens said that market principles should be followed for growth, but state interventions should be used to support the most vulnerable. So that has been you know, undertaken here. Prom promised here. Rather. So this is the gist of what we just discussed on agriculture, youth. On Rafael also it says the procurement of Rafael fighter jets and other deals under BJP government will be investigated and anti-corruption laws would be enforced without discrimination. On national security also it said national security advisor and national security council will be accountable to parliament and their powers will be defined under law. Chief of defense staff will be made principal advisor to the government on matters related to defense. So this is the whole gist of plan proposed. Also Niti Aayog which has been established by the present BJP government would be scrapped once BJP, uh, once Congress comes to power and planning commission would be constituted with redefined responsibilities. MGNREG 3.0 will be launched. MGNREG has been neglected. Its funding cut we have seen. So it has now the guarantee of 150 days has been promised by Congress and so on. Then next is RBI circular to banks on loan defaulters squashed. So this is regarding the 12th Feb 2018 RBI circular in which the key provisions were that uh, uh, you know uh, any loan account which gets defaulted even for one day then that should be called a stressed account and resolution process should start. So this was the uh, circular uh, which had become mandatory for all banks. So this was the process that even if one day's delay is there, then it's a stressed account. And once an account is uh, for stress, resolution process begins means banks will have to set aside higher capital known as provisioning. So in banking parlance, it is called provisioning means you have to keep aside higher capital for such stressed assets. So that would start and banks would uh, have 180 days 
that is around six months to resolve the insolvency and if it fails for all loan accounts over 2000 crore bankruptcy proceedings would be initiated under insolvency in bankruptcy court so all existing loan restructuring facilities which were there as of 12th of 2018 was scrapped so all these were withdrawn and only insolvency in bankruptcy code would be the only option for resolution of stress assets so this was the feb 12 2018 circular of rbi which supreme court has struck down now so banks and lenders have more time now to resolve these stress such. So all insolvency proceedings which have been initiated against debtors under the FEP circular of RBI have been declared non-est. Means now they are not any more applicable. So this is the judgment of the Supreme Court. So this has come as a huge relief for banks also because they have to do higher provisioning and also for various sectors, especially sectors which have been affected in the past uh, few months and you know, as such or, or for the past few years as such you can say so this is power sector telecom sector steel sector infrastructure sugar and fertilizer sectors so they would be giving a sigh of relief now power sector especially it has 66 gigawatts of stressed power assets worth 1.8 lakh crores so it is said that out of this over 40,000 crores of payments is due from the government owned discounts, distribution companies to power, you know, power producers, association of power producers, uh, director general says so. So if uh, the, the state owned, government owned distribution companies give them the money, then 13 gigawatts of power units problem will be resolved. So this is there, the power sector is also under stress. This is there. Then RBI actually has defended the move in the Supreme Court also it argued saying that this FEP circular was in public interest, in the interest of national economy so that evergreening of debts does not carry on indefinitely. Otherwise what happens is that banks, uh, because the project is becoming unviable, maybe a little more funding will make it viable. So banks give more loans to such uh, companies and uh, it results on any relaxation being given. Actually if it does not work then the stress increases because there is more loan which has been provided which also has to be repaid so it all becomes more complicated so it also sometimes is misused for evergreening of debts so that keeps on continuing so that's what RBI says that we do not want this to take place that's why the FEP circular was, was issued and uh, you know now it says that since the circular has been scrapped by supreme court recovering 3.8 lakh crore of stressed loans of over 70 large borrowers has become uncertain so the court actually found favor with the company's argument the private sector is arguing that this general action by the rbi applying six months or 180 days limit to all sectors without going into the special problems faced by each would treat unequals equally so that's why I demanded that the circular be scrapped and Supreme Court has done that. So here you can see the detail provided about the Feb 12, 2018 circular of RPI. It, uh, you know, it classified large loans as stressed within a day of default. And you can see, so it was a one day default was for large loans only, about 2000 crore rupees. And banks to frame a resolution plan within 180 days for them. Otherwise, insolvency proceedings begin. Earlier schemes which are there for corporate debt restructuring like S4A, SDR, Joint Lenders Forum, they all were scrapped. They were not applicable anymore. So, you can see that is mentioned here. So, it was actually insolvency in bankruptcy court been in place. RBI wanted to harmonize and simplify the framework for debt resolution. So, earlier debt schemes were made ineffective. So of course, there are sectors like telecom, power sector have their specific problems because, you know, power sector also because of, uh, you know, front and back end linkages, coal not being available and because of external factors too, it has not been able to uh, produce uh, uh, electricity and, you know, get connected to the grid. So then for, for, for troubles which are not of its own making, if it is going to suffer, then of course, the sector will raise its voice. So that all is there. The next is jet resolution plan hits turbulence. So this is regarding jet airways. So jet airways resolution plan, the bank led resolution plan which has been in use, SBI led lenders uh, that decided they will convert this debt of 11.4 crore, uh, the debt to uh, jet airways into 
11.4 crore shares for just rupee 1. So, this proposal now was done, that restructuring was being done under the circular of RPI. So, because it's a huge loan, you know, it has been given. So, now since that circular has been scrapped, then there are concerns that this resolution plan can also go awry. Even Naresh Goel himself, who has been forced by the banks to resign, may challenge the decision. Even strategic investor Etihad Airways may challenge the way resolution plan has been drawn. And further, jet airways troubles increase. Airline has grounded 50 more, 15 more aircraft owing to non-payment of lease rent fees to SS. So this is regarding the resolution plan proposed to. Uh, but now but there are questions about how this would go ahead. Even Naresh Goel has been forced to step down. Etihad whether it would invest more into the airlines is also not sure. Process here. So, Jet Airways has been, uh, you know, uh, for the fourth state quarterly uh, registered losses in December 2018. Salaries to senior executives and pilots have remained unpaid. So, even uh, Indian Credit Rating Agency downgraded its long term loans. So, that's why this uh, resolution plan came forth. The next is enzyme to curb bacteria cell growth discovered. So, this is Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology. The scientists here have discovered an enzyme which helps in breaking cell walls of bacteria. So, this offers a potential for new drug delivery route to arrest antibacterial resistance of existing antibiotics. So, antibacterial resistance has been a huge cause of concern. So, present antibiotic drugs become ineffective because of this. So, this enzyme which has been discovered helps in breaking cell walls of bacteria. So, antibacterial resistance can be stopped. So that is a, a significant discovery, a significant find here and it is crucial to know how cells grow in bacteria to understand the antibacterial resistance to currently available antibiotics. Scientists all over the world are trying to understand this phenomenon and a breakthrough has been achieved by scientists here in India at Cellu Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology. So senior scientist Manjula Reddy along with her research scholar uh, Chiranjeev Pavan Kumar, they had been working on how the cell governs the synthetic machinery to build the cell wall in the first place. So, you know, they identified the principal players behind this process and discovered the new mechanism or an enzyme through which cells regulate growth in its walls. So, this enzyme being discovered has been called a scissor enzyme. So, other bacteria too have the same enzyme working on cell division as the cell wall is fundamental for bacteria's growth and division. So, this scissors enzyme being discovered is a significant find. So, blocking the scissors enzyme from functioning it will provide a new way to target microbes and you know because cell walls will be down and then the bacteria can easily be attacked. So, it can lead to new wave of antibiotic drugs. Classical antibiotic drugs actually target the last stage of cell synthesis to prevent cell growth that is you know penicillin that hits the machinery that creates the cell wall. So now this uh, new discovery actually has been significant. So here you can see this is regarding antibiotic resistance. How does it occur? So there are a high number of bacteria. Few of them are resistant antibiotics, uh, resistant to antibiotics, and they uh, and when the antibiotics are taken, all bacteria die except this antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria. So then these multiply. And these grow and they can even transfer their drug resistance to other bacteria causing more problems. So this is a huge concern and steps which need to be taken to prevent antibiotic resistance which have traditionally been highlighted you can see are there should be no over prescribing of antibiotics. Patients should finish their treatment on time. There should not be any overuse of antibiotics in livestock and fish farming too. Then you know, uh, in hospitals and clinics also infection control should be strong. There should be hygiene and sanitation maintained and uh, of course new antibiotics are being developed to, to counter antibiotic resistance. But the present discovery is a significant find of this scissors enzyme. The next is Pakistan airspace closure hits Afghan, Kazakhstan, Russian airlines. So thousands of passengers traveling this summer are likely to face longer flights and pay higher airfares due to the closure of Pakistan airspace. So, Pakistan airspace is closed for any airline that is coming to India. 
So it has been more than a month now because after the Balakot air strike, Pakistan announced that its airspace airspace is closed for India. So the worst affected airlines are from West and Central Asia. So passengers uh, going from Kabul to Delhi because Pakistan is the only country in between. So now the passengers demand here has come to one tenth of what it used to be. The airfares have doubled, more than doubled, from eighteen thousand to and fro journey. It has become forty two thousand. And it is said a vast majority of those who travel from Afghanistan to India are for medical treatment, so they are delaying their travel plans now. Kazakhstan airline Air Astana it also said that now it takes more than eight hours from Delhi to Almaty as well as Astana. Earlier it used to take three uh, to four hours, around four hours. So passengers have been cancelling their bookings also because of the long flying hours. And who Kazakhstan airline actually decided to in, not increase the cost; it has absorbed the raising airfares. Still, the passengers are cancelling bookings. Even Russian airlines has also faced trouble because increase in flight duration by two hours has resulted in mismatch with the vast majority of connecting flights, which is hitting transit passengers. This is the concern here because of Pakistan airspace being closed. So you can see from India. The old route is for Afghanistan lies ahead, so Pakistan comes in between. So old route to from India to Central Asia to Russia was this. Now the new route is taking this detour here, so that is costing. More. You can see the hours increase shown here. Too. The next is starting May, Israel to launch a string of defense satellites. So starting May 2000. It 19 now. Indian Space Research Organization plans to send up at least eight Earth observation satellites of varied views at almost one satellite a month. So the communication satellite GSAT 32 will also be launched next year in 2020 to replace replace GSAT 6A, which was lost in a in a failed launch, and it was meant to serve the ground forces, the armed forces here. So GSAT 6A would be replaced by GSAT 32. Then there is also CartoSat 2, which is high resolution imaging satellite, which is also a defense use satellite. In earlier also, you know, which are satellites have been launched. So the CartoSat 2 has been launched. Then there is also earlier three launches like HiSIS satellite launched in November 2018, MicroSat R launched in Jan 2019, and even MiSat MicroSat R you should know is the one which was destroyed in the present ASAT, and MiSat satellite launched recently, which we discussed two days back. So all these have been for strategic use. So now defense-related satellites are also being launched by India. Another radar imaging satellite, Resat, you know, is also being proposed to be launched. You can see the details provided here. It's a high-resolution mapping satellite, Resat 2B, along with uh, sorry, radar imaging satellite, along with uh, high-resolution mapping satellite. So cartography means mapping. So CartoSat satellites are for mapping. So this is high-resolution mapping satellite. Of course, that will be used for defense purposes. And even the radar imaging satellites are for military purposes. You can see both are understood to be useful militarily and seen as overdue assets. So this is the list of uh, satellites which Israel is expected to launch in 2019-20. Resat 2B, CartoSat 3, Resat, GSAT, which is a new series now being initiated. The next is. Indian space debris may have doubled after Mission Shakti. So Mission Shakti is the ASAT anti-satellite test which was conducted by India. So the amount of Indian space debris it is said must have doubled in the aftermath of the Mission Shakti anti-satellite strike. But still, if you compare that with the space debris generated by the other three powers, China, Russia, and USA, it is very insignificant. So it is said only 80 pieces of space debris are attributable to India are in orbit. And they are being tracked. So this is spacetrack.org, which is maintains a repository, and this is pub, uh, public access repository maintained by U.S. Defense Wing. So it tracks uh, space activity. So this is what it says. It, the, however, it said that this does not include the debris from MicroSat R, which was recently destroyed in the ASAT test by India. NASA, however, when the USA has supported India, but NASA has criticized the space agency of USA has criticized India for the test, describing it as a terrible, terrible thing that has endangered the International Space Station and led to creation of nearly 400 pieces of orbital debris. But then it is said NASA uh, NASA's uh, uh, statement as such uh, 
should also look at how much debris USA is generating because if you look at India's debris of 80 pieces, there are around 4091 pieces of debris which USA has generated, 4025 generated by Russia and 4038 by China. This is prior to the present test. Even European Space Agency says there are around 34,000 debris objects of size more than 10 cm and 9 lakh objects from 1 cm to 10 cm and 128 million objects from 1 mm to 1 cm orbiting the Earth. So all this is space debris of varying size. So the speeds at which these objects hurtle across the space actually makes them extremely dangerous. So speeds make them very dangerous. So it is said a collision with a 10 cm object would entail a catastrophic fragmentation of a typical cell. A 1 cm object will most likely disable a spacecraft and penetrate the International Space Station's protective shield strip. And 1 mm object, more smaller object, could destroy subsystems on a satellite. So smaller the size of the, uh, of the space debris, the more with more intensity it can travel and can cause more damage. So that is the concern. However, International Space Station being affected as NASA claims that the ISS has also been put in danger but then ISS is one among the most fortified space objects. It has a debris shield which is deployed around the fluid modules and each of these shields is composed of two metal sheets separated by about 10 cm. So, as you can see these nerve walls also are there which can extend the spray of smaller fragments also. So, outer bump shield, um, bumper shields exploits of the impact image to shatter the debris and inner wall will extend smaller fragments also. So this is the detail you can see about debris in orbit and out of orbit from China, Russia, UK, USA, India, Japan and France. The next is election commission pulls up railways Air India over model code. So election commission has expressed displeasure over the lackadaisical approach of Air India and railways, Indian railways, on enforcing the model code of conduct. Because once model code of conduct comes into effect, then they cannot advertise, you know, because these are public majority. Government has is a majority stakeholder in these entities. But recently it was seen that boarding passes of Air India had Prime Minister Narendra Modi's photo. Also, railways also had tickets carrying uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's photographs and it was serving teen paper cups bearing maybe Chokidar slogans, which are used in the trains. So, no election commission has raised questions on this. Then next is early brain function affected in poor kids. So, this is a study undertaken by researchers from University of East Anglia and they have found that children born in poverty show key differences in early brain function. So, they had done this study on children from US, from UP. So, you can see children aged between 4 months and 4 years in rural settings were studied and the results were compared, you can see, uh, results were compared with children from families in Midwest Africa. So, it was seen that brain function of the children aged between 4 months and 4 years in rural India as such. So, children from low income backgrounds where mothers had low level of education and we had weaker brain activity and were more likely to be distracted. So, this is the result which, has, which the study has found now. So, they are at a disadvantage from the beginning. And the last news is manufacturing PMI is at 6 month low. So, manufacturing activity has slowed to a 6 month low but still it is uh, you know, expansion in the sector in the economy that is 52.6 is the uh, reading for March 2019 but it is low compared to Feb 2019 when it was 54.3 so this you can see in last six months it is the lowest so uh, you should know manufacturing PMI so purchasing managers index this is for the for the manufacturing sector means industrial sector it is a private sector survey which is undertaken so Nikki India manufacturing purchasing managers index is the one PMI which is presently in use so it is done by interviewing purchasing managers of various select manufacturing industries. So, it gives a clear understanding on expansion of contraction in the economy through their viewpoints. And the government data which is released on manufacturing sector is IIT, index of industry production. So, that is government survey. 
this is private sector survey and here the reading is in this manner that you know it can be above or below 50 uh, reading over 50 means expansion in the sector and below that below 50 it denotes contraction in that case and this this uh, graph actually shows you the variation from April 2016 to March 2019. So, this is it. so these are the news items. Thank you.